Christian is autistic, but his entering the contest completely of his own accord was a sign to his parents of how well he is getting along. It had to do with exactly what Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon and as listen to what Sonic says at the end of it and write it down for a whole week and then I had to mail it in and I had to be drawn out of a hat and I just won. And Christian's father says it only takes a few hours for the boy to master one of the electronic games before he moves on to another one. In my last video, I covered some basic facts about Chris Chan's life. We saw that Chris is one of the most documented individuals of all time, with a wiki dedicated to cataloging his life, which contains over 23,000 pages. We saw how his life has been filled with a seemingly endless onslaught of trolling. Trolling which has taken place in a vast array of different forms, both on and offline. I also stated my reasoning behind why I believe Chris Chan and the world surrounding Chris is an ideal candidate for a case study on the subjects of anthropology and human behavior. But these things don't tell us much about who Chris Chan is as a person. There are a lot of opinions on what kind of person Chris is. There are a lot of different facets to who Chris is. To truly understand the person, it's not enough for me to list some facts or to state my opinion. I can only scratch the surface of understanding Chris Chan. The focus of this series will be to allow Chris to speak on behalf of himself. I'd like for us all to hear who Chris is in his own words. Over the many years that Chris has been posting online, he's made many statements about who he is and things that are important to him. Those facets of Chris have also undergone many changes over time. There are vast differences in how Chris defined his own character at 16 and at 36 years old. This series will be a chronological examination of the life of Chris as a whole, and examine the changes in how Chris has defined himself over the years, in order to give a fuller understanding of who Chris is as a person. The following collection of audio and video will help to give an understanding of who Chris believes himself to be, and how that has changed over the years. We will hear how Chris defines himself as a person, what Chris identifies as, and what he loves and hates. We'll hear about his deepest fears and desires, in his own words. We'll also see how all of those things have changed over the years. As well as showing a timeline of Chris in his own words, I will also be discussing the videos themselves, so as to give context as to why Chris made the videos in the first place, and to explain the repercussions and consequences of posting those videos for Chris Chan. I'll be doing this because context is for kings, and consequences will never be the same. Finally tonight, Sonic the Hedgehog is running wildly in the Chandler household this weekend. 12-year-old Christian Chandler of Charlottesville was the winner in a video game shopping spree. Christian is one of only about 100 winners nationally to receive $1,000 worth of Sega games and equipment. For his parents, it's just another example of how well he's doing. Christian is a high-functioning autistic child. This past fall, on his own initiative, he entered a contest based on a favorite cartoon character. It had to do with exactly what Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon and I'd listen to what Sonic says at the end of it and write it down for a whole week and then I had to mail it in and I had to be drawn out of a hat and I just won. And Christian's father says it only takes a few hours for him to master an electronic game and then move on to another. I can't master any of them. That's it for now. This news broadcast is from February 1994 and it's the earliest known footage of Christian at the young age of 12 years old. This video is considered to be one of the most important videos of Chris, as for many people, it offers a solid evidence that Chris is a real person, and not, in fact, a character. Over the years, some have speculated that Chris is, in fact, the ultimate troll, that Chris may simply be portraying a character. People have theorized that perhaps Chris is some sort of performance artist, similar to the satirical politician Vermin Supreme. This early footage shows a consistency to Chris, stretching back to childhood. This kind of dedication to character would be far beyond that of any troll doing some sort of 24-7 gay op 
or a subversive performance artist trying to make a statement about the world. There are of course a lot of people who would go to great lengths to do these kinds of things, but very few people have the determination to start setting up such an elaborate scheme at the age of 12 years old, and to follow through with it all the way through their entire life. What this video solidifies is that the person we will see and hear in later videos is not a fictional character, but a real person. A person who was once a child, with hopes and dreams, whose life might have been drastically different if not for some key events. One of the most noteworthy things about this video is that we're seeing Chris at a high point in his life, winning the Sonic Watch and Win sweepstakes. But the fictional character Sonic still holds great relevance in Chris Chan's life to this day, and we'll be seeing a lot more of him as this series goes on. The next video we'll be looking at excerpts from introduces us to Chris at the age of 16 years old. This video is a treasure trove of insight into who Chris Chan was at an early age. We see Chris reciting a very personal poem, which he wrote for a high school English class assignment. He partly based this poem on Walt Whitman's Song of Myself. Chris made this video acting under the assumption that his English teacher would have absolutely no issue with showing its contents to a class of high school students. Anyway, uh, I'm going to do my poem now, so here goes. I hear America singing as I sing of myself, and you experience as I experience. The problems of yourself are my problems. The youth of the young singing cries a happiness. The children's song is song of laughter. At age six weeks, I sang the song of laughter. That at one and a half years of age, the Lord put the mute button on me. That was my parents' song. They pulled me through the talk again at age seven. I now, 16 years old, and good talk up to hope to achieve new goals and Mario Raceway Records and to finish my homemade Nintendo Power magazine. The magazine songs, The Ballad of Sonic the Hedgehog on Game Boy. The rudeness of the teenager's song, the despicable mention of rude words, and D-R-U-G-S. I'm not afraid to speak, despise the hazardous flukes in, in America's song. My song that I sing, although I talk well, my peer relationship is low and my loneliness is off the scale. Anyway, that's my poem. Now we're going to go behind the lines and see how it all got inspired. After reading his poem, Chris goes on to explain each line. He also talks in detail about his childhood. At age six weeks, I started the sound of laughter, which was my, I started talking. Now my first word was monkey, and here's how it happened. My mother and I went down to a Best Broad store in Charlottesville many, many years ago. Of course, you know, at age six weeks, I was born in 1982. Anyway, uh, mother was carrying me in her arms, and she was shopping, but then all of a sudden, I said, uh, there was a woman, there was an old woman nearby, and uh, she so she heard me and uh, she came over, asked my mom, "Was that your son?" And my mom said, "Yeah, that was my son." And she didn't say anything; she was just shocked. And anyway, I uh, went on and on with my mouth. That's until the uh, age one and a half years. <sighs> the sad thing that happened: the Lord quit the mute button on me. Click, click. That's what my, I'm representing my autism there. The war clicking my mute button. Anyway, here's how my autism began. I'm going to be very truthful here. Uh, I have babysitter, but uh, she's kind of a mean babysitter. Anyway, uh, one day she was on the phone. And uh, I came up, I came up to her, I came over to her and uh, said something, and uh, she was kind of angry at me because I interrupted her phone call. Then she locked me in a room for nothing, for nothing but toys, and uh, she just locked me in there. And uh, I was very lonely, so I just sat there and cried, and well, that's how my autism began, thanks to an evil babysitter. And then thanks to my parents. Actually, my mom did most of the work, but uh, it was thanks to my parents. They got me talking again at age seven. 
anyway, here's how they happened. My mother, my mother always took me down to the toy store uh, at least every weekend. Well, anyway, with mommy always read the packages for me, and I read along with her. And uh, well, we just read the uh, top, name of the name of the toy and the name of the character that it represents, and then they'll go to flip side and see all the other characters, now with other toys in the collection. After discussing his early childhood, Chris spent several minutes of his high school assignment showcasing his handmade Nintendo Power magazine. There it is, my homemade Nintendo Power magazine. Actually, that's just the cover. After showing his passion for creativity and Nintendo, Chris goes on to talk about his disdain for rude language and drug use. But moving on, the, uh, the rudeness of the teenager song, of course, I'm of course not talking about those despicable rude words they got there. I mean, they're, I mean, oh, you know, I mean, when they say those, so it's I'm like, oh, now how does this get through to those, te to those students in that English class of mine? I hope to get through the heads and, and get through to everybody else in that school. That that rude language is cruel. I mean, it's, you see it, and they, I mean, you think it's cool to the adults, but you should never ever do. I mean, it's just rude, very rude. I mean, I'm just sick of it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then there's that other thing, the uh, D I D T S. I mean. It just makes me sick to see people just waste their lives away on that. I mean, it's despicable. Despicable. Because now I'm talking about... As Chris goes on to explain each line of his poem, we see him begin to open up about his feelings of loneliness, as well as his longing for companionship. Now, of course, that last line there, the song I sang, you know, my talk about my relationship with love, I talk about the relationship with my neighbor. I mean, I do not have that many peers in the neighborhood. All I have in my neighborhood is Damien out. You should see him a lot. And I told you a boy named Michael. He's a just little kid. Anyway, I'm just usually lonely at home. Don't have a second player to play with. I don't even have a little bird. I'm still hoping for one. Anyway, uh, I see by the clock. That's about time I sign off. But uh, before I go, I just one thing to say to uh, the teacher. And up in English class, you have got to be kidding me. I mean an F. I do not even know when was the last time I got an F. I mean, who knows? It could have been back in old Green County. That stupid place. Eesh. That Green County primary. Actually, it was my school, but then the came the family Green Elementary. That's why I got the F. Anyway, the many years go by. And you came along and gave me an F. I mean, I start off with a name, and you just lowered it, lowered it, lowered it. I'm getting sick and tired of this lower day. What do you have against all, against the handicapped children anyway? I mean, I know my handicap is autism, and I'm not afraid to admit it. And you, Mrs. Bird, I think that F is very disrespectful. I mean, I am very emotional about it. <laughs> anyway, it's time I sign off. Well... This has been the Christian Channel Show, and we hope you all enjoyed it. And as they say in the Lion TV Land, good night, folks. <laughs> In this video, Chris claims that he spoke his first word, monkey, at the age of just six weeks old. He also claims that he was mute for several years as a child. Chris also says that his mother helped him to develop his speech while he was mute as a child by taking him to the toy store and reading the packaging of toys along with him. It would seem that at this age, Chris believes his autism is rooted in trauma. The trauma being that he was locked in a room full of toys by his childhood babysitter. Chris spent several minutes showing off his handmade Nintendo Power magazine, showing both his love for video games and of course, Sonic the Hedgehog. In this video, we see that a 16-year-old Chris has a deep disdain for drug use and rude language. Chris also discusses his feelings of loneliness due to his lack of friends. He also states his want for a younger brother. The video ends with Chris chastising his teacher for grading his previous work with an F. He states that he is very emotional about it 
and that he isn't afraid to admit that his handicap is autism. In this short news clip, we see Chris at the age of 17. Well, if you have grade schoolers in the house, they'll probably be interested in this next report. Now, if you don't, you can learn about a craze that's been sweeping the nation. NBC 12 reporter Jim Babb marched into the marketing breach today to bring us this story of Pokemon. Although in this video, Chris doesn't describe himself in any way, this news broadcast gives us a brief glimpse at Chris at the age of 17. We see Chris enjoying a hobby, which is still a passion of his to this day. That passion being Pokemon. Then the games began with Byzantine rules. I'll switch, I'll put out my Dragonair, even though I have 60 damage on it. Oh boy. And I have Spear Energy on it. Slam attack. Um, I'm watching and, and uh, I still have no clue. Hello. My name is uh, Christian Chandler. Age 22 at this time. This next video we'll be looking at excerpts from was recorded by Chris in 2004, just prior to Christmas. In this video, we will see Chris discuss something which is very important to him. His love quest, his sweetheart search, his goal of finding a pretty girlfriend. Anyway, for uh, over a year now, I've uh, been trying to attract an 18 to 20 year old boyfriend free girl, 18 to 21 before February 24th, 2004, which is this year. Anywho, been trying for over a year to attract a girl, boyfriend free girl, and I have failed. And you know, we got we had so much so many failures at this time. You can't help but feel sad, you know, I'm depressed. And yeah, here it is about Christmas time. And well all I want for Christmas is a boyfriend free girl. And of course uh, during the time I have uh been that trying. <clears throat> I've written a few songs about my uh, love quest. And so for now, for now, I would like to sing to you my, uh, two, uh, two of my songs. Before singing, Chris takes a moment to address the handmade necklace he is wearing, which he made in the likeness of his original comic book character, Sonichu. This here is Sonichu. You can look him up on the web. It's my site. It's playing S-O-N-I-C-H-U as your web search term. Anyway, here's my first song called Sony a Cute Girl. Hey, look at me. I'm standing here sad and lonely without a fire bell. Desire to not hear you say, I have a boyfriend. The most obvious thing that we learn about Chris in this video is that he is seeking companionship in life. At the age of 16, Chris spoke of a deep loneliness he felt. At the age of 22, we see him a year into a quest he chose to embark on, a quest to find the romantic companion to help him cope with those same feelings of loneliness. Tell me why I'm stuck in a sad lonely cage. Tell me why I so need a cute girl my age. Tell me why I ain't ever wanna hear you say I have a boyfriend. After that performance, Chris goes on to sing another song about wanting a pretty girlfriend. And that song, all of Chris is a pretty girlfriend. All I want for Christmas is a pretty girlfriend, a pretty girlfriend, a pretty girlfriend. <sighs> well, at this time of year, all I can say right now is that I hope Santa will comply with my request and bring me a pretty girlfriend. And so, happy holidays from me, Christian Chandler, by the way, you can call me Chris in public, and thank you. At the end of this video, we learn that a 22-year-old Chris still believes in Santa Claus, and presumably Santa's magical powers, which include his ability to comply with his request and bring Chris his pretty girlfriend. I'm not entirely trying to mock Chris by bringing this up, but I think it's very important to note 
that a 22-year-old Chris still exhibited traits of magical thinking. He still believes in things that most people mature past believing in at a much younger age. This is a very telling trait that we will see time and time again with Chris. In order to help briefly explain what I mean in my usage of the term magical thinking, I will read from the American Psychological Association's Concise Dictionary of Psychology, printed in 2009. Quote, Magical thinking is the belief that one's own thoughts, wishes, or desires can influence the external world. It is common in very young children. A four-year-old, for example, might believe that after wishing for a pony, one will appear at his or her house. Magical thinking is also colloquially used to refer more broadly to mystical, magical thoughts, such as the belief in Santa Claus, supernatural entities, and miraculous occurrences. End of citation. It is not my intent to posit that there is an inherent issue with magical thinking, but how a person's beliefs can manifest in their actions can be both positive or negative, and there will be more on this later. Moving on for now. One of the most evident facts in this video is that Chris is clearly very lonely. Chris is searching for a romantic partner, and he has embarked on what he calls his love quest. We see further evidence of his loneliness in this video when he states, all he wants for Christmas is a pretty girlfriend. We also see more and more that Chris has a want to express his feelings, and he is searching for different mediums to do that through, whether it be poetry, music, art, or videography. On screen now is Chris Chan's attraction sign, which he'd made the previous year to the last video, to use on his college campus. Chris had already embarked on his love quest at this time, and he had hoped that this sign would help him solicit a cute female to make into his true sweetheart. Chris briefly describes himself, as well as what he's looking for in a potential sweetheart. What Chris has been searching for in a romantic partner has changed a lot over the years, but this early attraction sign offers some insight into how Chris presented himself to others, and into what Chris was looking for in a romantic partner. He describes himself and what he's looking for as follows. 21 and single white male. Shy, smart, young at heart, computer skilled. Entertaining. Humorous, a great tinker and go-getter. Quote, natural salesperson. Enjoys good parts of life. Diplomatic, friendly, loves his family. Peaceful, very creative. He's lonely. Seeking a cute 18 to 21 single female companion. 18 to 21 years of age, does not already have a boyfriend. Single, average to slender weight slash body type. White, lives in Charlottesville or Rookersville area. Does not smoke or drink alcohol. Happy, positive personality, average slash high income, drives a vehicle. If any men read this huge sign, mind your own business. And to all men with girlfriends, except marrieds and blacks, go jump off a cliff. Have a nice day, smiley face. My reason for including this was to contextualize some of the details within Chris Chan's love quest. I won't be spending much time analyzing this attraction sign as I feel it speaks for itself. I'll simply say that above all else, what I feel we can take from this sign is that a lonely 21-year-old Chris Chan was looking for cute singles in his area. The next video we'll be looking at is from Chris at the age of 25, and it's one of the most historically relevant videos there are of Christian Weston Chandler. Chris made this video in the hopes that it might one day be shown in schools as an educational video. Chris reflects on and recounts some lessons that he's learned in life, in the hopes that future generations of children might learn from the wisdom of this high-functioning autistic 25-year-old man lecturing about gender as he plays with children's toys. <clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, and dudes of all teenagers, as well as the uh, gals. My name is Christian Chandler. I am here, and y'all are there. This message is for everyone of the present and the future beyond this date. February 24th, 2007. My birthday. My 25th birthday. I am high-functioning autistic, and in my 25 years, 
I have seen and learned so much. And today, I intended to share some wise words that I hope each and every one of you will take to heart and allow for yourself and everyone else a better, prior future. First off, remember that going to school is not a torture. It is a place of learning, a place for growing, a place where you form the spilling of your own opinions, your own feelings, and your own personality. So learn everything you are able to and grow with it. Now, you should also be able to try something for yourself before forming praise or to test of it. As long as those things will not harm you or shorten your lifetime in any way, it's totally cool. Chris starts his list of lessons off by warning about the dangers of alcohol and tobacco consumption. It would appear that Chris still holds the stain for drug use, much like he did at the age of 16. Don't do it because I haven't done it and I don't like it doing either of them. You should avoid at all costs Smoking, drinking alcohol, and intaking similar icky, dangerous stuff. And smoking will eventually cause cancer. And it will, you'll be more likely to get heart attack, viruses, and your life will be cut drastically short. They don't call cigarettes and cigars death sticks from nothing other than killing you slowly. If I could, I would take every last ounce of tobacco, put them on a rocket, and shoot them up to the moon. And for uh, alcohol, they'll cause uh, liver dysfunction, kidney prop, kidney failures, and uh, not only that, but when you get drunk enough, bar fights and automobile accidents. So it's a real slow-acting poison. And I haven't done either one, and look at me now, I'm a fizz a fiddle, and I'm living 25, hoping to live on to be about 80 to 100, and y'all... Hopefully, y'all will get a chance to get up to that ripe old age as well. Next, Chris encourages children to partake in hobbies typically intended for a different gender. Now, among the better things you should definitely try before despising is some of the hobbies of those of your own opposite gender. Like, uh, for example, if you're a young gentleman, I recommend buying yourself a My Little Pony figure of your favorite color or whatever. Now, uh, stroking the hair of said pony is very relaxing and therapeutic, and also rubbing it against your cheek. That's nice. And also, uh, you can pretend that uh, the pony is uh, that girl you want to take you want to take out to. You want to take out sometime, and talk to the pony like you would talk to the girl. After that stunning display, Chris goes on to talk about Transformers toys and male anatomy. Now, for the uh, ladies, I recommend a good old Autobot from Transformers. Because you can get to learn how to examine the mechanics and variations of each and every, I mean, of the uh, Autobot you have. Like, uh, you would try, like you would learn how a man works, and it'll allow you to feel more comfortable in approaching and talking to that boy you've been flirting from a distance, or uh, just been uh, flirting with from a distance, and uh, hopefully uh, all you all you have to do is just end up and say hello. I mean, it's not so hard. All you have to do is say hello to the man, ladies. That's all, and everything will just get going from there. After Chris Chan's side tangent. He encourages female viewers of this video to just say hello to the man that they have been flirting with from a distance. Chris goes on to encourage children to ignore any ridicule that they might face for trying hobbies typically suited to another gender. But in, in any case, uh, while few people may ridicule you, you should not worry about it. If you, if, because most everybody will be all, totally okay with it because it won't matter. It won't matter because... They see you enjoying it, and that's totally cool if you're enjoying it. So you enjoy it, just do it. Don't worry about other people's opinions. Next, Chris encourages children to always remember what their true and original gender is when trying hobbies intended for another gender. He also discusses the importance of staying on the straight path. The real peanut gallery. <laughs> that would be peanuts. Also, keep in mind that while you're playing with these things, you should keep in mind of what your true original gender is. Because uh, it's like you're learning about that girl you want to take on a date, young man. 
or uh, likewise, you feel more comfortable to approach that boy uh, just saying hello that you've been checking out from a distance, young lady. And hopefully in due time or now, each and every one of you will stay straight. You know, girl for boy, boy for girl. Everything else is vice, as said by Dr. Kinsey. Not just for me, not for the big man upstairs, not for your family, but do it for uh, yourself and for, and for the benefits of everyone in the future. Your children, your children's children. And besides, if you stray away from the straight path, it can really jeopardize the entire future of the world and the human race. Next, Chris tells women that they should consider less attractive men as romantic partners, instead of just men who are rich and handsome. Also, girls and ladies, don't just go over Gaga over the handsome rich boys and men, because they may turn out to be disrespectful and distasteful in their personality. You should take into consideration all the other gentlemen that uh, you may have considered that may be less attractive or equally, less or moderately. Because those will, because they will likely have a fair personality that you will t that you will generally enjoy and like, and they may end up having a brighter future for themselves. Like look at me now, I'm shooting this movie for a DVD. That's got that I hope will be shown in a couple of schools at least. Next, Chris reiterates his earlier point about staying on the straight path. He also encourages couples to overcome their disputes by remembering the times that they were most attracted to each other. Also, when you each when each and every one of you has a true general understanding of the uh, opposite gender, and after that finding that special man, ladies, or that special girl, gentlemen, always keep to heart and memory the times that you two felt most attracted to each other, because that will be a key point to the recovery from any disputes or arguments that you two might have in the future. Chris goes on to further advise couples watching this video. He encourages couples to keep each other. And he also advises against ever breaking up or ending a romantic relationship. And also remember, you two should keep each other. Because there will be nobody else, no matter how much you think about it, nobody else that can replace that special someone him for her or her for him. There's just nobody else. There's no substitute for that first one. Finally, Chris ends his video by listing all of the previous points he's made. He wraps up his video by advocating for peace over war. Evidently, Chris still believes in non-violent confrontation and protest. And now, I leave you with the lessons that you should have, I hope you have learned from my message. You should, all, you should stay in school, learn as you much, and try before you praise or despise. Never smoke, never drink, never worry about how others think of you when you do things, or when you play with things that may not, that may not seem like you or whatever. Don't be afraid to approach those of your opposite gender. And most importantly, please stay straight. I leave you with those words, as I have shared with you on this, my 25th birthday, February 24th, 2007. I am Christopher Christian Weston Chandler. Live long and shine on in your very own unique way. War is never the answer. Peace is. Never fight. Compliments will get you fuzzy wuzzies. War gets you prickly wicklies, as well as punches that get you those too. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. Chris believes children should find interests that are typically intended for another gender, like playing with Transformers action figures for girls, as well as playing with My Little Pony dolls for boys. Chris goes on to encourage young boys to try talking to their pony dolls, and of course to pretend that the doll is the girl that they like. Chris also rubs the pony doll against his face and says this. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Chris also says that children should ignore any ridicule they face for trying hobbies typically intended for another gender. He says not to worry about what people think. However, Chris says that children should always remember their true and original gender, 
if they are trying hobbies typically intended for another gender. As stated prior, Chris encourages children to always remember their true and original gender. Chris also believes that everyone should avoid going off the straight path, and he condemns homosexuality. Chris's views on gender and sexuality evolve and change a lot over the years, and those will be the subject of close inspection within this series. What I feel is most noteworthy here at the age of 25 is that Chris believed people should stay straight and always remember the gender that they were born with. In this video, Chris encourages women to just say hello to the man that they are flirting with from a distance. He postulates that, by examining the difference between Transformers toys, quote, like they would learn how a man works, females could feel more comfortable when approaching males that they find attractive. Chris also encourages women to seek out less attractive or moderately attractive men, instead of just going gaga over men who are rich and handsome. Chris discourages couples from ever ending their first relationships, saying that they should keep each other. From Quick's important message, we learn many things that a 25-year-old Chris values as important or sees as distasteful. One example of this is that Chris encourages everyone to pursue scholastic education. In this video, we learn that Chris still holds a disdain for drug consumption, much like he did at the age of 16 when he made the Song of Christian video. Chris states that he has never consumed tobacco or alcohol, and that he wishes to live to between the ages of 80 and 100. When recapping his wisdoms, Chris ends by saying, And most importantly, please stay straight. Chris ends this video by advocating for peace as well as condemning war. Seemingly, Chris believes that non-violent solutions are the most righteous for conflict resolution. I think there are some interesting parallels between the Song of Christian video and this previous video, Quick's Important Message, and I'd like to briefly cover them here. At the age of 16, Chris made a video hoping it would be shown to his high school English class. At the age of 25, he made a video which he hoped would be shown in schools as an educational presentation. At 16, he spoke in length about the difficulties that he had faced in his childhood. At 25, Chris feels he's learned a lot in his short life, and he wants to share what wisdom and knowledge he has gained. At 16, Chris spoke about how his mother had helped him to overcome his inability to speak as a young child. He said his mother taught him to speak by reading toy packaging along with him. At 25, Chris believes that playing with toys for the opposite gender can have beneficial effects on the development of skills for intergender social exchange. At 16, Chris expressed loneliness due to not having many peers to socialize with. We know that at 25, Chris is several years into his love quest. In this video, we see Chris encourages ladies to approach the man that they have been flirting with from a distance. Chris also encourages women to seek out less attractive or moderately attractive men. He also discourages couples from ever breaking up. It would appear that over time, Chris has a growing desire for companionship, and that he places a lot of importance in romantic relationships, as well as the longevity of those relationships. As I have stated prior, Chris Chan's views on sexuality as well as gender have changed a lot over time. This next quote offers us important insight into a 25-year-old Chris Chan's views on those subjects. This quote is an excerpt from an email that Chris sent to his gal pal Megan. He sent this email later in the same year as the previous video, on October 20th. Yes, I am a homophobe. I fear them all. And I fear the tormenting temptations of falling off the straight path. But then I mentally, sometimes from a DVD, and if you'll pardon the expression, shove some pussy in my face. I tell you what, if I ever stoop down to changing my pap, I might as well would get a gender change operation. I've seen the episode of South Park where Mr. Garrison had that operation. They showed the gruesome details. Ugh. I was programmed to be more favorable towards women over those of my gender. With the infinitely high boyfriend factor, I am not fond of about 99.9999999996% of the total male population. With a margin of error of the four billionth of a percent, 
for about 100 men, of whom are okay acquaintances. Those doofs get all the luck, having a sweetheart to care for and be cared from, getting all the hugs, kisses, and emotional support, and the security of a solid future without loneliness and with love and children. And besides that, my autism is not much help on the programming of my mind. Sigh. Oh, my life. As Chris continued posting online, different corners of the internet began to take notice. One reason that the previous video is one of the most historically important videos is partially because Chris revealed personal information about himself, which would be later used by trolls to irritate him. In other words, Chris fed the trolls. Chris fed them information. Fodder to be used as ammunition in an all-out internet war soon to be waged against an unsuspecting and woefully unprepared Chris Chan. Many trolls found justification for their acts in things said by Chris in this video. Many cited that because Chris expressed homophobic views, because he appeared to be creepy and lecherous, it meant he deserved to have his views challenged, even if those challenges came in the form of vicious trolling. Others who simply found fun in trolling Chris came readily armed with the knowledge that Chris took umbrage with homosexuality. Armed with this information and just a little bit of artistic talent, trolls would begin sending Chris homoerotically charged fan art of Chris Chan's original comic book character Sonichu, much to Chris Chan's disgust. You see, it was on November 3rd, 2007 that Chris was sent an email by a user of the website 4chan. The email read, This is some fan art my friends and I have drawn. I hope you enjoy. The fan art in question featured Chris Chan himself, as well as his original comic book character Sonichu. It was collected from a board on 4chan, which was discussing Chris and his antics. Chris had this to say in response to the 4chan user known as Evan Christopher George, the next day on November 4th, 2007. Thank you for your fan art contributions. In constructive criticism, I like the one with me and the quote, girlfriend editions, as well as me glaring in the eyes of the blue guy. But I am feeling great detest towards the other two. Sonichu and I are not of that nature at all. If you would like to make it up to me though, Please draw a strip of Rosichu stripping for Sonichu, and have him fuck her, and draw Rosichu masturbating and squirting. I am straight, dammit. I will not be veered in any other disgustingly grotesque direction. Again, most nasty fan arts are not appreciated at all. Please feel free to share that quote with the rest of the fans. Sincerely, Christian Weston Chandler. We are keeping track. Evan replied to this email simply with one sentence and two attached images. He wrote, I'm very sorry I disappointed you, Chris Chan. I drew what you wished. Another 4chan user known as Samuel Burrow emailed Chris two days later on November 5th Samuel was emailing to inform Chris of a webpage dedicated to mocking him, posted on the satirical wiki site Encyclopedia Dramatica. Samuel was also emailing Chris to inform him of a catfishing scheme which was being planned on the website 4chan. The email read, Normally I don't care for what my peers at 4chan.org do, but I bring you some news the people over at V, aka the video game board, are making fun of you and made the encyclopediadramatica.com forward slash Christian site, which you already know. But I left them to it as I couldn't care less what they did. But now they have hit a new low and one is planning of pretending to be a girl in hopes of getting you to send nude pictures to them. As I said, I normally don't care what Anon does, but I find this sad and immature, and so I feel I must give you a heads up on Anonymous's plans to ridicule you on the interwebs. Later that same day, Chris stated in an email to his gal pal Anna McLaren that he found the ED page when he googled the word Sonichu, and he made no mention of the email from Samuel Burrow. Often with Chris Tree, sources of information will conflict with one another, which can make it difficult to know the exact truth of what happened. What is known for certain is that on November 5th, 2007, 
Chris was in fact aware of the ED page mocking him. And on screen now is a close approximation of what the ED page looked like on November 5th, 2007, courtesy of the Wayback Machine. Two days after the previous email exchange, on November 5th of 2007, Chris posted a video to YouTube in which he publicly addressed the ED page dedicated to mocking him. Seemingly, Chris had come to the conclusion that the creators of the page had simply misunderstood who he was as a person. Chris wished to correct their misconceptions of him by informing them of what a true and honest person he is. Anyway, it has also come to my attention that I have a lot of people who may have picked up on the wrong theories of my person. I would not quote any hate sites, but I would like to humbly apologize for appearing to be some kind of sleaze, troll, badass, or whatever adjectives, good or explicit, you may feel about me. Please understand, I am a 25-year-old, high-functioning autistic male with a simple, peaceful dream of becoming a father of a sweet, little, pretty girl who I will dub the name Crystal Weston Chandler. Crystal. A name that sounds similar to mine, but it has a nice ring to it. And it's also similar to the illustrious metal that is mine from the Earth's ground. Weston, my mother's maiden name, and a proper English name from royal descent. We have, uh, we have been traced down to Daniel Weston, who was on the May Mayflower voyage. And uh, beyond him, Anne Boleyn, who was the, uh, one of Henry VIII's, King Henry VIII's wives who gave birth to uh, Queen Elizabeth I. <coughs> and Chandler, the, uh, name my fa the family name my father had. From his side of the family, we have the uh, Cherokee blood. I'm one sixteenth. Yeah, short line there, Cherokees. We're a respected tribe. We should be respected anyway, even though we were forced into the trail of cheers. But that's in our, that's in our whole nother story. You can go read, you can learn about in your local libraries. Um, my mother and my father are both really nice old fashioned type people who not only gave the birth, gave me birth at their ages, which my mother is 66 currently and my father is currently 80. They both just turned that way in the last couple of months. And, uh, I was born in 1982. They gave me the birth then and, uh, anyway, there was some nice of them for them to give me the uh, birth during the early 1980s. I was diagnosed with high functional autism. And I lived a uh, somewhat rough life. I've had an abusive babysitter at one time. And some of the teachers and principals of Nathaniel Green Elementary School, and I was attending in later years, but uh, late 1980s, early 1990s, they abused me. They abused me by pinning me to the ground with uh, their hand, with the uh, holding my wrists and my ankles, pinning me down the ground, and and audio taping my cries and shouts. But anyway, my mother and my father, they both fought the court system, the Greek County court system, which uh, they were not a very nice bunch of people. Very not. Hands down. So please understand, I am not a violent person. I'm decent. I come from a caring, loving pair of parents. I'm kind. I'm considerate. I will respect your space and your feelings ever so much. And I apologize for my MySpace profile if it appears to reflect anything on the contrary of all that. I apologize that I appear to be a slow-minded person. I'm sorry for reflecting any negative feelings towards each of you that have felt them, including those who have had such feelings they have created uh, demeaning web pages. Oh, I ask. Oh, I ask. Are those people who are watching this right now, this is just Take them down, please. I'm asking, as an innocent victim of misunderstanding, just take down your web pages or add them to positively better reflect my feelings as an individual, as a person, as a man who has suffered like most everybody in this world that we all live in. Thank you very much for your time and listening. And please remember, I'm an innocent person, just like most every one of you. I've had my faults. I've had my share of bad times. I have my share of good times. Please understand that. 
Thank you again. Take care. In this video, Chris directly tells his viewers a lot about who he is. He talks about his greatest dream in life, to have a daughter named after the illustrious metal, Crystal. Chris recounts the history of his family and his two second names. Much of the family history he believes he has is verifiably false, however. But it does show us he has great reverence for his supposed ancestry, as well as his mother and father. Chris also shows a great deal of pride in his own name, Christian Weston Chandler. Chris says that he was diagnosed with high functional autism and that he has lived a uh, somewhat rough life. Going on to talk about some aspects of his somewhat rough life, Chris mentions that he had an abusive babysitter at one time. Chris also recounts an incident from his childhood. He claims that his elementary school teachers and principal forcibly held him down and recorded his screams of anguish. Chris states that he is not a violent person. He describes himself as decent, kind, and considerate. And he says that he will respect your space and your feelings ever so much. Throughout this video, Chris makes several apologies. Near the beginning of the video, Chris makes a humble apology. For appearing to be some kind of sleaze, troll, badass, or whatever adjectives, good or explicit, you may feel about me. Chris also says that he is sorry that I appear to be a slow-minded person. Chris apologizes for the contents of his MySpace profile and how it might appear to contradict any information he has laid out in this video. After a final summary of who he is, Chris goes on to make one final apology. He says he's sorry for reflecting any negative feelings towards each person that has felt them including those who have had such feelings they created the demeaning web pages. After his apologies, Chris goes on to make one final plea to the creators of the ED page. He asks that they recognize his struggles, as well as who he truly is. He asks them to either remove the page or edit its contents to better reflect what a kind, considerate, true, honest, and innocent person he is. To summarize this video, Chris basically unloads a ton of personal information about himself in order to try to convince people that they've misunderstood who he really is. However, this attempt to sway public opinion of himself was done in vain. What Chris didn't realize is that the people mocking him had no intention of stopping. Furthermore, Chris didn't realize that the more he revealed about himself, the more information people would have to weaponize against him in their trolling efforts. Following the previous events, Chris began to devote much of his time adding large amounts of true and honest information about himself to the Encyclopedia Dramatica page. At first, his goal was to remove all compromising information about himself from the ED page. However, he quickly realized that this was an impossible task to achieve. He instead adopted a new strategy, referred to as information overload. He began to add paragraph after paragraph of often deeply personal information about himself to the ED page. It was his misguided belief that he would force the trolls to cease their mockery and harassment against him, either by overloading the trolls with so much information that they would be stunned into a state of inaction, or that the trolls would become sympathetic to him from reading about the self-proclaimed difficulties that he had faced in life. Ultimately, Chris made the previous video in the hopes that the creators of the ED page would change the content of that page. He wanted them to set the record straight and let the internet know what a kind, caring, true and honest person he believed himself to be. You see, the trolls were spreading fake news about Chris and they needed to stop. And if this video wouldn't work, Chris was going to make them stop in a different way. What better way to spin the story and take control of the narrative than to share a biography worth of deeply personal information about himself to make sure people knew who he really is? How could that ever backfire?
prime example of Chris feeding trolls information comes from the previous video. The idea that Chris dreamed of having a daughter more than anything else stood to many as the perfect concept to troll Chris with. Chris showed the sharks where he was weakest, and the trolls began to circle him, ready to bite Chris until their eyes rolled over white. Chris makes it clear that his greatest dream in life is to have a daughter named Crystal. Crystal, however, is the name of a character in Chris Chan's webcomic. This character named Crystal is Chris Chan's fictional twin sister. But there's nothing wrong with that, right? Chris gave the same name to his fictional sister as the daughter he dreams of having someday. How can anyone ever twist that against Chris? What's the big deal? The big deal occurred during the She Came For Quick incident, which occurred on November 11, 2007, just four days after the previous video was posted. At this time, Chris was still engaged in Operation Information Overload. You see, at the age of 25, Chris would become extremely defensive towards just about anyone who questioned his heterosexuality. And this caused many people to troll him by saying that he is gay. One thing which truly enraged Chris at this point in time was that the Christian ED webpage contained fan art of Chris and his comic book characters engaging in homoerotically suggestive acts. So on November 11th, Chris put into place his most cunning plan yet, which he was certain would dispel the baseless rumors of him being gay once and for all, and assert his heterosexuality to all of those stupid, nasty trolls. You see, if the trolls are going to post gay fan art, what better way to beat them than to replace those pictures with straight fan art? But where would Chris even find such a thing? We all saw what happened the last time Chris demanded a fan draw some straight fan art for him. Chris was going to have to get creative if his cunning cunning plan was ever going to work. So, on November 11, 2007, Chris uploaded several pornographic images to the ED page, which he drew himself. He replaced the gay fan art with straight fan art. Chris was the winner. Operation Replace the Negativity with Positivity was a total success, with no potential to backfire whatsoever. Unfortunately, this backfired stupendously on Chris and served as one of the most monumental mistakes he would ever make in his life. A mistake so huge, it destroyed the deepest friendship he had at the time. You see, one of those pictures that Chris drew was a self-portrait of sorts, entitled She Came For Quick. In this self-portrait, Chris is performing a sexual act on a young woman. A young woman which many people said bore an eerily striking resemblance to none other than Crystal, Chris Chan's fictional cartoon sister. Accusations of Chris lusting for incestual relations with his make-believe sister started to flood online forums and discussion boards. People were also accusing Chris of desiring to have a young daughter in an impure way. People cited this picture as evidence that Chris was some sort of lecherous pedophile. And all of this came to a head when Chris revealed that the young woman in the picture was in fact Megan, his best friend. Something which Megan was rather disturbed by. Something which drove a wedge in their relationship. This event created a rift between Chris and Megan, which could never be closed. So what exactly is the point in discussing the She Came For Quick saga and the ED page? Well, there are many points, but the key point for right now is that when Chris reveals information about himself, things that he hates, things that he desires, things that mean a great deal to him, trolls use all of that information against him. And this is a key example of that. Chris didn't understand that he needed to stop engaging with the trolls. He didn't understand that the more he revealed, the more he could be hurt. All of this led to Chris being provoked into an action which destroyed something very dear to him. His actions, his posting deeply intimate facts about his life, his involving his friends in his online debacle. These things say just as much about who Chris is as Chris said about himself in all of those edits to the ED page. I know that this has been quite the sidetrack from videos of Chris talking about himself, but the context for why Chris created these videos 
and the consequences of his posting them are just as relevant as the content of the videos themselves. But for now, let's move on. Chris posted the next video on August 3rd, 2008. This video came after months of Chris unsuccessfully trying to edit the ED page to his liking. One key thing we learn about Chris in this video is that after months of being pushed, he's starting to get angry and lash out verbally. It's very clear that he's becoming more and more perturbed by the online trolling. I present this open message because I have a whole bunch of people on the internet give me hate. Show me a lot of hate. And I do not appreciate it. it takes me off. You think you could just hate me just to get a laugh out of yourself. Think about it. You're laughing at somebody else's pain and torture because I am lonesome, still trying to find a boyfriend free girl and to make it to a sweetheart. Y'all think I'm just a sap, a chump, dumbass, whatever you may think. But you know what? You. You. Every last one of you who has expressed hate against me you're the shitheads. Also, every last one of you who thinks that I am similar to that of that senile old man and family guy, you're the pedophiles. Every one of you who thinks I'm homo and calls me that because I am not, I'm straight. I'm straight. You're the homos. Every last one of you. Chris goes on to talk about an issue he has with his Sonic Chew comic being distributed online without his consent, further showing us how much he cares about his creation. Without my consent or approval. So, it is a fake. And if it ever is published, or if it ever shows profit, lay way on your consciousness throughout your eternal life that you are torturing and worse off tearing the heart and soul and emotions of the innocent man the out the innocent still 26 year old virgin not only that but i have so many lonely nights and stress that you cannot just imagine it next chris addresses the encyclopedia dramatica page he expresses great disgust at its content and towards the people who have contributed to it. From every last one of you who has contributed to that Encyclopedia Dramatica webpage and every other forum, internet document, lewdly drawn pictures with dicks. I love dykes. Dykes. China. I'm straight. If I ever, if I see a dick, I just look away with a moment of being freaked out. After once again asserting his heterosexuality, Chris then goes on to talk about the She Came For Quick incident and who he feels is to blame for his lost friendship with Megan. And am I, am I or Megan Shore is still an iron, which by the way, she broke up with me so much long time, so much long ago because the contributors to that ED page, you broke the emotional strength between us. You promoted such twists and turns to everything I have said and drawn and written and whatnot. You broke up the best friendship, the best relationship, the closest I could ever have in his pitiful adult life. You did it! Every last one of you! If I could blame myself, I would definitely blame myself for drawing those five pictures. Those five drawings. And by the way, that is not Crystal, whose eyes are censored. That is Megan. And just for, and just for, for taking it up, and twisting it around as such. Think about it. Think about it. Wait on your conscience. 
Next, Chris threatens to withhold any further issues of his webcomic Sonitube, unless trolls stop their online hate campaigns against him. No more official Sonitube art or work may or may not ever emerge depending on the amount of hate that is decreased. That webpage, taken off the internet. I wish I had never found that piece of shit in the first place back on that Halloween of 07, somewhere around there. And promoting the hatred. And drawing such loose, such lucrative mockeries is not going to further the story plot or have anything new created or even going to help in any way. As I am telling you this, right into my PlayStation Eye. <sighs> Chris goes on to discuss his search for a sweetheart and his dream of having a daughter. If I ever do find the one that is to be my sweetheart, I will give her such care, such tenderness, such love. We get around a hanky panky, that's fine, that's good. We get married. I will have my God creation, my God called daughter. She will be taken care of lovingly. Those of you who mock me otherwise with such frivolous, lucrative adultery. If I ever hear another, any more new stuff, it will weigh on your conscience with me tearing at your souls emotionally. Chris continues to defend himself against online accusations. I am not a pedal fork, you dorks! I tell you, so much anger, so much stress, it's hard to see straight. But that, the result of all that you have contributed against me, weigh heavily like a 10,000 pound anvil. Chris goes on to reveal more details about his personal life, while doing his best to portray himself as a good person. If I was not a baptized man over at the Methodist Church by the University of Virginia, I'd tell every last one of you who have contributed to the hatred and downpour, go to hell. But I, do, but I would not even weigh that upon my worst enemy. Because that, because I am more kind than you think. Y'all just do not see that. Y'all just twist my words around. I do not wish to see any more hatred or adult mockery. And I want that Encyclopedia Dramatica page taken down forever. It will weigh heavily on your conscience each day that it is still up there. Finally, Chris reasserts that the trolls will feel a deep remorse if they continue to twist his words. I'll leave you with any other thoughts that you may have. But if you dare twist these words around, that will weigh worse on your conscience. The words that I provide from sound mind and heart, it will weigh heavily on you. It will weigh heavily on you. Chris seems to be reaching his boiling point in this video. After months of trying to edit or remove content from the ED page, he is making a video to fully express his anger and disgust at the content of the page and towards the trolls responsible for it. Chris only takes partial responsibility for the loss of his friendship with Megan due to the She Came For Quick incident. He places the majority of the blame on the trolls instead of himself and his own actions. Once again, Chris talks about some things which are very important to him, such as his webcomic Sonichu, his own heterosexuality, his search for a sweetheart, and his dream of having a daughter. In this video, Chris asserts to the trolls that, until the day the ED page is removed, or if he sees anything new added, it will weigh on your conscience with me, tearing at your souls 
emotionally. Chris also threatens to withhold any and all further releases of Sonichu until the trolls cease their online hatred against him. Chris made this video because he wanted the online trolling and hatred directed against him to stop. He also wanted the Chris Chan ED page to be removed. He was trying to accomplish this by applying the same methods he had been using in previous months while he was editing and adding to the ED page. He was trying to appeal to the humanity of the trolls. He had two primary approaches of trying to appeal to the conscience and sympathy of the trolls. First, by repeatedly asserting that they wouldn't be able to bear how their conscience would weigh on them each day. And second, by showing them what a good person he is and how he struggled in life. He saw himself as being innocent and undeserving of this harassment. And he believed he could convince the trolls of this simply by showing them who he truly was. Failing all of that, Chris would threaten the trolls with whatever leverage he had. And in this case, his leverage was to withhold his precious sonichu from the world. He believed that perhaps their desire to see the exciting conclusions to many unresolved plots of his webcomic might be enough to bring an end to all of the trolling. On January 12th, 2009, a nearly 27-year-old Chris posted the following video. Chris made this video under the coercion of a troll who had attained his passwords to sonichu.net. It was Chris Chan's belief that control of his website would be returned to him if he were to make a video proclaiming his homosexuality. Chris, however, opted to make a video proclaiming that he is straight. Despite the fact that this video was made under duress, we can learn a great deal about the conceptions and beliefs that Chris has relating to the sexes, as well as gender roles in society and in relationships. You know who I am, but I have randomly decided to make this video because I am sick of all the false accusations and rumors and slanders that have been going around on the internet about against me. So I tell you, so I tell you for sure and for true that I am straight. I can tell, and I can tell you why from my life to my stories, but I'll tell it to you in just a few short minutes. Anyway, most of my friends in my life have been female. I've had only few male acquaintances, and they definitely turned me off, the majority of them, because they are rude, crude, and inconsiderate, causing wars and such. But women are so kind and sweet. And you don't have to look at any, any, any of them in bikinis or in a nude to not, to, to, not to fail to see the attractant fail to see the beauty in each and every wonderful woman. But inside that beauty, they all have caring qualities, the majority of them. You know, between them and me and the majority of the world, we all just want to be understood. And I understand the ladies. I understand the women. <laughs> Chris spends the majority of this video talking about his appreciation for, and understanding of, the women. This is done in yet another attempt to prove to the internet that he is a straight man. You can, not, you can definitely see the sheer brilliance of their delightful personalities between each and every one of them. And yet some of them can turn and be very distraught but we have to learn to abide by them and just let it pass even if it doesn't pass we still love them because at one point even before at one point before they had a they did a 180 in that sense they were still caring and they can be still caring and just because they act in a harsh nature even when they should be calm and peaceful, they still care about the men in their lives. And especially the children that she and her husband push together. Like I will be putting together with my sweetheart, my sweet panda. And we're going to give you up. 
Chris briefly mentions Pam the Halo, his current sweetheart who he was romantically involved with online. However, Chris was unaware that Panda was a troll who was catfishing him. Chris then goes on to further assert how straight he is. I assure you that I am straight. Because, uh, you know, I appreciate the women, all the women, for their personalities purely. But any man would be crazy or even ignorant to not even notice the outer beauty in addition to their inner beauty. But I appreciate the inner beauty more than the outer beauty. But yet, I am attracted to the outer beauty as well, as the majority of my, of my gender should be able to appreciate. In yet another attempt to prove his heterosexuality, Chris holds up a copy of the men's lifestyle magazine Playboy, which is widely known for featuring professionally taken photographs of nudie ladies. We can all certainly see Chris has an appreciation for the female species, the females, the women, the beautiful ladies. Mm. But I digress with holding a Playboy, because I do not need to hold a Playboy to further prove that I am straight. Before long, Chris goes on to discuss the topic of his sweetheart search, as well as his ex-friend Megan. He says that despite being thwarted by her in the past, he doesn't hold any sort of grudge against her. It would seem that Chris is ready to forgive her for rejecting his romantic advances. Because I am educated between my life, between throughout my whole lifetime and the classes I have taken between said set and high school and real life experiences and my ins and outs in my sweetheart church search in the past, the long past. Even though I was thwarted by one female, I will not hold the grudge against her. Because I'm sure that she is sweet to others, especially to the men that are actually closer to her in her life than I have ever was or ever capable of being. I still <clears throat> will not hold the grudge against her. Yet I will, yet I have drawn previous times moments of rage and anger against, but expressing the anger in, a, in the sense of drawing, in the sense of art, but not to put it into gory details, but making it acceptable for even the, uh, to make it applicable to be TVY7 of that rating. That is not total rage, because that is rage, negative rage being put into positive. I put most of my rage into positive outgoing outcomes, positive drawings, positive inspirations, because I care about the women. And not just the women that I have drawn. And care about personally, but everyone that every woman that I am only acquainted with, or do not know personally, or 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 are even just total strangers to me, I still care about the women, and I even go as far as to stoop stoop to one low level, boobies. Vaginas. Mmm. Gorgeous. Very gorgeous. I'm straight. I love the women outside and inside. After that display of straightness, Chris goes on to say that he won't hold any sort of grudge towards the originator of the slanderous rumors involving his supposed homosexuality. Well, I can only say that y'all be damned. But I would not hold it against you because that is a humble, that is your opinion. And even though it is a whole bunch of lies, and it cannot be accept it cannot be easily determined whether the originator is male or female. 
I will not hold those opinions against anybody because I care. Chris goes on to talk about the ways he sees women as being superior to men. Chris is not only showing his appreciation for the women, but also his disapproval of his own gender. And I care more about the women, but I will associate and cope with in a, in a, in a okay light with those of my own gender, but I will show more affection and appreciation and care for the women. For the women. Because they are truly the delightful, the more powerful, the more agile, the more capable of coping with stresses in the lives in and around us all. Even the stereotypes they can they will express their anger against it but that is because they care about themselves and they want us to appreciate them individually for who they are but i digress i am straight because i care about the women individually i appreciate their humble opinions and as well as uh, their outer beauty and their inner beauty. And to every one of them, I offer a hug. You don't have to get in person because get because you can easily get that from those that are very close to you. Right, so. Christian Weston Chandler, I am straight. Mm. Peace. As I've stated already, this video offers us great insight into Chris Chan's views on men and the women. In this summary, I will not only be closely examining Chris Chan's views of himself, but also how his views on men and the women differ. In this video, Chris says that he just wants to be understood, much like the women do, and much like the majority of the world does. Chris says that he appreciates the inner beauty more than he does the outer beauty, although he is still attracted to the outer beauty. Chris says that he can only have one true sweetheart. It would seem that Chris favors the idea of monogamy at this age. Chris also says that he channels all of his anger into positive outgoing outcomes, positive drawings, positive inspirations, because I care about the women. It would seem that Chris sees expressing anger as actual anger, as being something that is inherently negative. Thus, he tries to channel his anger into positive creativity. Chris also obviously sees himself as being a very caring person, at least when it comes to the women. Throughout this video, Chris cites numerous points which he feels are evidence of his blatant heterosexuality. He appreciates women for their inner and outer beauty, and he loves the women, outside and inside. Chris says that the magazine Playboy has helped further his appreciation for the female species, the females, the women, the beautiful ladies. As further evidence of his straightness, Chris cites his lifelong education he has had from the following. Sexual education classes he attended during high school, his sweetheart search, his overall experiences in life, and his long past. Chris states that he has had only few male acquaintances. Chris says that the majority of men have turned him off. Chris finds the majority of men to be rude, crude, and inconsiderate. Another reason Chris dislikes men is for causing wars and such. Chris also says that he will only associate and cope with in an okay light with those of his own gender. Chris says that the majority of his friends in life have been female. Chris says he will only show affection and appreciation and care for the women. 
Chris says that he cares about all of the women, not just the ones he has drawn or knows personally, but each and every one of the women. Chris says that he cares about the women so much that he would even go so far as to stoop the one low level. Boobies. Vaginas. Mmm, gorgeous. Very gorgeous. Boobies. Vaginas. Mmm. Gorgeous. Very gorgeous. He says that you can see their beauty, even without needing to see them in bikinis or in the nude. Chris says that he understands the women and also appreciates their humble opinions. What a guy. <laughs> Throughout this video, Chris describes numerous traits to the women. He sees the women as being kind and sweet, as well as delightful and wonderful. He also says they have caring qualities, the majority of them, and that they have delightful personalities. He also describes women as the more powerful, the more agile, the more capable of coping with stresses. Chris says that some women might turn and be very distraught and may act harsh in nature, even when they should be calm and peaceful. His advice when this happens is to abide by them and just let it pass. In this video, Chris states in no uncertain terms that he dislikes the majority of men. Chris also states numerous reasons why he sees the women as being superior to men. Although those last two points are about Chris Chan's views on other people and not himself, it must be considered that a 26-year-old Chris is a young man and his views about gender could deeply reflect how he feels about himself. It could be deduced from these two facts that perhaps Chris has a disdain for his own masculinity, given that he ascribes nothing but negative qualities to men. It could also be possible that Chris feels he is lacking in any of the qualities that he perceives as being more typically masculine traits. Perhaps Chris feels that he has more traits in common with the women than he does with men. He may see himself as having many of the same qualities that he views as being more typically feminine traits, such as possessing a caring nature and not feeling that he is inclined towards violence, i.e. causing wars and such. This kind of speculation is merely conjecture, but I think at least a little bit of speculation can help us explore what Chris Chan's views might potentially show us about who he is and who he sees himself to be. But let's put conjecture and speculation aside and move back to the actual facts. During this video, Chris indirectly mentions his ex-friend Megan, as well as the events of the She Came For Quick incident. He defends his actions, saying that he drew those pictures in anger, and that That is not total rage, because that is rage, negative rage, being put into positive. Chris feels that by taking an emotion he sees as inherently negative, and creating something positive from that negative feeling, he is thus indemnified from any potential wrongdoing. His logic seems to be that the positive he has created i.e. his art, is the lesser evil than just expressing his rage in some way. Chris says that despite his romantic advances being thwarted by Megan, he will not hold a grudge against her. His reasoning for not holding a grudge is that he is sure Megan is still sweet to the men in her life. I'm sure that we can all see that from Christian's own perspective, this is a truly noble and admirable act. This next video we'll be looking at excerpts from was posted by Chris three days after the previous video on January 15, 2009. Hello, I record this message it was in response to the Encyclopedia Dramatica page that has been against me since November a couple of years ago. Chris opens this video by saying that the ED page is filled with nothing but heinous lies about him. He then goes on to briefly describe what kind of person he sees himself as, to help people truly understand him. To actually, to actually best understand me, I am a good person. I'm a good person. 
I'm good natured, but I will show my fangs when I have to. Only when I have to. I'm showing my fangs right now against that page. Chris spends some more time denouncing the ED page before he goes on to exhibit further signs of magical thinking, as well as showing the trolls what he meant by his fangs. I curse y'all to bad luck and extreme misfortune. Shinye hame ha! Peace. In this video, Chris describes himself as being a good person and as good natured. Chris also says that he will show his fangs when he has to. Although it isn't made totally apparent in this video, we see Chris showing his belief that he has a supernatural ability to curse people to extreme misfortune and bad luck. The primary aspect of this video that we'll be focusing on is what Chris says at the very end. I curse y'all to bad luck and extreme misfortune. Shinye hame ha! This is Chris Chan further displaying signs of magical thinking. While at age 22, Chris still believed in Santa Claus, at 26 years old, Chris truly believes he has the power to curse other people, simply through sheer willpower. As opposed to further discussing Chris Chan's supernatural abilities myself, I will instead refer to an email Chris sent to his gal pal Katie. In this email, Chris explains his metaphysical process behind his apparent ability to cast a curse upon another person. A now 27-year-old Chris sent the following email six months after he posted the previous video, on August 17th of 2009. Quote, I've learned from my experiences that a curse or a blessing shot is mainly comprised of the respective enraged or caring energy you are currently feeling. I do not encourage you to do this, but I will tell you for your information. When cursing, I feel enraged or really angry. I channel that energy between my hands, gathering them in and throwing them towards either the target I'm angry at, or the ground, or skyward. A choice of words are optional, but they do seem to add more oomph to the attack. When removing the curse, or blessing, I feel the caring emotions that comes more natural within me. I gather that energy into a ball, then release it into a single target, or all around me within a certain radius. Blessings are more encouraged than cursing, I have learned that personally. Cursing is a double-edged sword. You curse someone else, and in turn, you later feel saddened that you've hurt that person, and in relation, but only for a short time, feel cursed yourself. Think about that. Stay safe. Christopher Christian WC After months of revealing to the world his deepest aspirations, loves and hatreds, months of sharing his life story to anyone who would read or listen to it, after putting into place plan after plan which all backfired on him, Chris had not yet learned that doing so was only causing him more and more anguish. Even at the cost of his closest friendship, Chris still continued to frequent and add to sites like Encyclopedia Dramatica. Simply put, Chris kept repeating the same thing over and over, expecting different results. One very important aspect of the life and tale of Chris Chan is that Chris reveals a lot of personal information completely willingly. There have been numerous leaks of his private information, sex tapes, chat logs, etc. But much of what is known about Chris was given freely to the internet by Chris himself. It was Chris who first publicly revealed his home address to the internet. It was Chris who first publicly revealed his fecal incontinence to the trolls. But does that justify people sending boxes of shit to his home? No, of course not. It's easy to say that Chris brings the trolling on himself, either by being a hateful person with offensive beliefs, or because he feeds the trolls with his crazed reactions to their antagonism. And of course because of all of the embarrassing personal details he shares so freely to the world. But I don't think we can place total responsibility for other people's actions squarely on Chris alone. Just as a tangential example, I don't have any control over whether or not you're going to leave hateful comments on this video. 
I can't assume responsibility for your actions. But I can assume responsibility for the fact that I'm making and publishing this video. And that by doing so, I open myself up to criticism. By stating my views so publicly, I accept that I might encounter others in the public who might not agree with me. And I have to be prepared for the fact that others in public might not react kindly to what it is I'm saying. This is a concept that Chris likely didn't fully understand when he started to post online. He was sheltered in his childhood and he didn't socialize much. Between isolation and arrested development, Chris had a deep naivety about the world and about the internet. In his adulthood, he was ill-prepared for other people's criticisms of his views and actions. He likely hadn't imagined that his views might be controversial, and he was entirely unprepared emotionally to face people using the information he shared to tease, troll, or harass him. After examining 15 years of Chris Chan's life, I think many patterns are beginning to emerge, and there are many lessons that could be learned from all of this. But for now, this concludes the first chapter of our journey into who Chris Chan is, in his own words. Chapter 2 will be opening with The Mumble Calls, and will cover the Blue Spike and Clyde Cash sagas of Chris Chan's life. Since The Mumble Calls are only audio, I chose to end this chapter here, so I could start fresh with a new saga and a more audio and less visual episode for Chapter 2. I've been CJ, and this has been a Cracked End production. Stay tuned for the next one, all you crazy crack addicts out there.